today, the First Lady, and she's expressed a desire to sing our, our, our song. So, here's how we do it. I hope Gary has forgotten the tune. I hope you haven't forgotten the words. I hope I haven't forgotten the words. And I hope you haven't forgotten the words. Ah, one. Ah, two. Ah, three. Take me out to the floor. That simple blood test for prostate cancer with the Dodgers' help in Major League Baseball. Today, the death rate is down by 52%, and there's 1.4 million men that are spending today with their families that people didn't think were, were. So thank you, Dodgers. Thank you, Major League Baseball. And let's go to homerunchallenge.org, and you can learn all about how you can pledge to raise money for cancer research and root for the number one hitting team of home runs in the major leagues. Dodgers have 34 home runs already in the month of June, so you could have made a donation from June 1st to June 17th, which is today, homerunchallenge.org. And happy Father's Day to you. You have your grandkids here. This is Spencer and Alice. All right. Spencer and Alice, big Dodger fans. What can you say about what the Dodgers have been able to do as far as the home run ball is concerned in raising so much money for cancer research? We've been following them all month. We were with them in Pittsburgh, at the stadium in Pittsburgh, and they were just fabulous. But all this money goes to research, and all the money raised in the Los Angeles area stays right here at the leading cancer centers that we have at UCLA, USC, and Cedars and others. So... But one of the things we've learned over the years is that prostate cancer mutations match up with 72 other forms of cancer. So when we eliminate prostate cancer as a cause of death for men, we're also eliminating colon cancer, breast, and ovarian cancer also. The research that you do continues to improve lives of so many millions of people. Again, homerunchallenge.org. Michael, thank you for being here and continued success as you continue to raise thank money. You and let's get some home runs in the latter part of the game for the Dodgers. That's right. Today is the last day. Homerunchallenge.org. We already have 34. How about a few more? Thanks for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, guys, upstairs. This is the Monday Morning Quarterback on the 18th of June, 2018. Coming to you from WBRN Radio and on the Boston Red Network. That was uh, Michael Melkin of the uh, Prostate a foundation that uh, does research on a prostate cancer being a prostate cancer type we are aware of the uh, valuable research that the prostate cancer institute does and we uh, recommend that uh, men uh, take the PSA test we did and that's how they found our prostate uh, cancer and um, some of the new research is going on now uh, using uh, various uh, gene uh, mapping uh, programs and uh, various uh, treatments. That, uh, there was a gentleman with a 200 uh, PSA that his PSA is now 1. He's still alive. He's a uh, nature photographer and he was about to sell all his equipment because his uh, Prostate cancer had uh, metastasized or spread. There was a time when that happened, you were immediately dead. Now some people that their uh, prostate cancer has metastasized or spread did, are uh, able to live uh, one to five years, which is a, a plus. One of the things to remember about cancers, whether it be prostate cancer, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, uh, colon cancer, the longer you survive, the longer you have a chance of a living uh, 
more days of your life in being a fully active uh, period there. So thus, um, we uh, move along here with the Monday morning the quarterback news out of the Russian Federation, Mexico. Won that match over Germany, which was a surprise in the World Cup. We'll uh, have the rest of the World Cup results from uh, yesterday as we look at the World Cup and also Major League uh, Baseball. But firstly, we'll go uh, to uh, Texas and a very interesting situation that is developing in Texas in terms of immigrant uh, minors that are being separated from their parents. This is McAllen, Texas, but there is also uh, a station about 20 miles outside of El Paso, uh, Texas, dividing uh, young children, many of them under six years old, from uh, their parents and placing them on cement uh, floors, providing uh, blankets, thin uh, mattresses, bottled water, etc., and they treat the little kids uh, to uh, cartoons uh, with uh, Spanish uh, subtitles. I'm not certain that the little kids can read those if they're under six years old. But it's become a uh, babysitting uh, situation, a primary, a daycare center, or day and night center for little children. And there are roughly over 2,000 of these little children in these uh, centers. And the day was a Father's Day, and several uh, Democrats, uh, including Jeff uh, Merkley of uh, Oregon, uh, had a news conference. I believe his news conference was in El Paso. And this is going to be a very big issue uh, for the Democrats. They'd be well advised, the Democrats, that is, to uh, take on this is- issue and all of its dynamics. Laura Bush has written a letter in support of keeping uh, families uh, together. The uh, Reverend Dr. Franklin Graham of the uh, Billy Graham Institute and the son of the uh, former evangelist, late evangelist, I should say, uh, has uh, come out against it as uh, basically a uh, horrible idea. Now, this has currency. The Democrats uh, for the 2018 uh, round should be running a, a commercials on this. The pitiful of the inhumanity to the humanity. This is reminiscent of what the Nazis did, there's no doubt about it. The Nazi in the White House, Miller, I dreamed this up along uh, with uh, the fellow that's no longer there, Bannon, another alt-right Nazi. And this is how it should be presented. And the Democrats are targeting uh, independents moderate voters, etc. This is a deal. Now, as far as the various machinations surrounding the uh, probe uh, there uh, with uh, the former director, Mueller, that is a different type of issue. It's a legal issue. A report by the Inspector General was issued uh, basically that uh, Mr. Kumi did not do anything wrong but yet he made uh, some mistakes, and we already knew that. But that's not the kind of issue that grip people, and the reason for that is that there are all kinds of spins out there that Republicans are putting out there to demonize uh, Mueller himself, or Mueller. Mueller, let me pronounce his name, pronounce it German way. Anyway, Mueller to dehumanize him and the Department of Justice. But yet they cannot have it both ways. Old Borgard session was uh, uh, quoting some biblical um, passage or whatever about the immigrants, uh, children. That is ir- 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 uh, indefensible, uh, period. So these are some things that are coming out here in the public. We hadn't seen uh, the polling, we had seen, I should say, none. Uh, recent here, we'll take a look at it, but basically speaking, uh, the American people uh, come down on the side of the children and not the Trump administration. Now, why is this a deal breaker? In many of those uh, districts that uh, Hillary Clinton carried, 
the voters there are being mobilized by this and many uh, Laura Bush type of Republicans. So this will make a difference in uh, the uh, midterm election. And as long as it stays on the front page and second page of newspapers, it is in the social media. It counterbalances and takes off the front page the uh, derogatory news. We were looking at a tweet today of the uh, Poor People's Campaign, which is a modern-day version of the one that Dr. the Reverend Dr. King ran. But they are not getting monopoly uh, media uh, and they should be uh, getting it. We're going to do more here uh, to uh, push their event forward, uh, advertise it, propagandize, whatever you want to call it, around the Poor People's March. They'll have a big march on the 23rd of June in Washington, D.C. And we'll have special programming tilted uh, towards that using our new modular programming. We were able to do that uh, in... Uh, the Seattle election uh, there, uh, and also in the uh, capitulation in uh, Seattle. We'll talk about that a little bit in this uh, broadcast uh, here, but we thought we would bring this uh, uh, to the uh, front page of the broadcast, uh, period. Uh, To Brownsville, uh, the Brownsville uh, Children's Shelter, that was Chris Van Hollen, uh, 10 years and old, but the one uh, in uh, outside of uh, El Paso is the one that we should uh, look at and look at with uh, as much uh, scrutiny as is possible. It was 96 degrees there. Protesters held up signs. Stop the deportation. Red one resists Trump's hate. And in Espanol also. So this is uh, moving along and uh, Senator Merkley uh, they accuse him of uh, putting out a fake release. No one is taking a public lecture from uh, Merkley added uh, whose own uh, politics uh, endanger children in power uh, human uh, smugglers and drug cartels. Now this is just actually silly. Uh, this is from a deputy press secretary Name uh, Gitley, uh, Hogan Gitley. Never heard of him before. But this is a kind of war when you see the little children out there. Um, no matter what type of counterattack the White House does, it is simply not sustainable. Period. And they are being uh, told this, no doubt about that. Uh, Various on fair and unconstitutional. That's Adrian uh, Espanyant of uh, New York's a congressman there. So various others. Uh, this uh, Borgard session zero tolerance uh, tar- tolerance excuse me policy announced doesn't mean anything at all. And Trump was as uh, quiet as a church mouse, as LBJ would say on this issue. On uh, a radio address on Saturday, he brought up unaccompanied uh, alien miners. uh, Said he created um, loopholes that let young members of uh, MS-13, the international gang, in. But they're not going to accuse four- and five-year-olds of being in MS-13, period. A sign of differences, all sides are... uh, Tussling came a statement from, of all people, a Milana uh, Trump. Trump's hate to see children separated from their families and hope both sides of the aisle can uh, finally come together to achieve successful immigration reform. She believes we need to be a country that follows all laws, but also a country that governs with a heart. And that is the Achilles heel the Republicans uh, face. So this disparaging of Senator Merkley, etc., doesn't uh, work, period. And it is not uh, working. And this is one of the uh, big problems of alternative facts and the Trump, Trump uh, propaganda machine. Now, granted, the monopoly media, including the Washington Post here, who we support democracy... Uh, 
dies in the dark? Well, the Poor People's Campaign is now in the dark. And this is part of the problem. Editorial judgment as what to cover and what not to cover is a very, very big uh, problem out there. The Poor People's Campaign uh, effectively moves against violence. It covers this particular topic. It covers health care for all, and those are progressive uh, trends. Now to the uh, Reverend Dr. Franklin Graham, who uh, defended uh, uh, D.J. Trump in every turn of his presidency, his brokered administration in recent days, calling the uh, family separations disgraceful. Now that word disgraceful um, does in uh, the whole uh, propaganda machine of Trump. That's the reason Trump didn't have anything to say. Trump cannot win on this issue. He can only lose. Beto uh, O'Rourke, he's the running for the uh, Senate, one of several Democratic lawmakers who headed to the border. He's from El Paso on a Father's Day in a public demonstration there. I hope uh, to produce the outrage and public pressure to force them, uh, those in power to do the right thing. O'Rourke said he's challenging uh, Ted Lyon Cruz. This is inhumanity, I would say. It is on America, and it happens right now in America. We will be judged for what we uh, do and what uh, we fail to do now. This is not just uh, on the uh, Trump administration. It's on all of us. O'Rourke offered some sympathy to Border Patrol agents who we are asking to solve an international problem. So that is part of the whole situation. This moves not only there but in uh, to New Jersey. There are detention centers all over America. Period. So this is some of the outrage uh, that is happening from Laura Bush. She is the wife of the former President G.W. Bush. She has here is a former First Lady. On Sunday a day, uh, we as a nation set aside the honor of fathers and bonds of family. I'm among the millions of Americans who watch the image of children who are being torn from their parents in the six weeks between April 19th and May 31st, the Department of Homeland Security has sent near, uh, nearly uh, 2,000 children to Mass Detention Center or Foster Care. More than 100 of these children are younger than four years old. The reason for that separation is zero tolerance policy espoused by uh, Borgard uh, Sessions, my word, not hers. I live in a border state. She does live in Texas, in Pacific and Houston, Texas. I appreciate the need to enforce and protect our international borders, but a zero policy uh, is cruel, it's immoral, and it breaks my heart. Let me just finish this up here. In uh, 2018, we cannot, as a nation, uh, find a kinder and uh, more compassionate and more moral answer to this current crisis. I, for one, believe we can. Period. And this is a break on another front. Uh, DJ Trump is still running a mass uh, campaign against uh, federal workers. He wants to charge uh, federal workers, the unions, uh, for uh, having office space in uh, federal facilities. He wants to evict all union offices from uh, facilities while the Social Security Administration plans to uh, revisit the 21 points in its union contract. If he's successful, his moves uh, being challenged, of course, in court would upset many long-standing uh, labor management relations that largely have existed in an atmosphere of corporation, uh, cooperation excuse me, than a confrontation he favors. Well, that is one of the uh, weaknesses in uh, many of these government settings and in many other settings when you have situations where labor is forced to collaborate uh, with the uh, bosses, and what is happening now is D.J. Trump is just presenting the uh, realistic side of the coin, but labor itself is diametrically opposed uh, to uh, capital or the representatives of capital, which he is. The American Federation of uh, Government Workers, the largest of the unions, uh, the, the uh, Department of uh, Health and Human Services, I have told the National Treasury Employees uh, Union, it should begin paying rent for space in uh, these uh, various buildings. 
So they'll have to move out, uh, referring to executive orders is issued on June the 5th. Letter uh, to the uh, Social Security Administration. The letter provides a list of uh, 21 uh, contract uh, items Social Security wants to change, including office space, workers' rights, uh, child care, elder care, equal opportunity, leave uh, training, health, safety, performance, discipline, grievance, process, promotions, almost uh, anything anyone can imagine. That was Executive Order 13837. So these are some of the things that old Trump is up to in the background. That is the reason we cannot just get uh, carried away with uh, the issue of the, uh, the Mueller investigation. Now this is from the Washington Post. This is a poll, one of the more recent on the uh, Singapore uh, summit. Skepticism remains, but has eased on uh, Democratic Republic of uh, North Korea or the nuclear intention, as they call it. 53% says it's unlikely the summit will lead a North Korea to give up its uh, nuclear arms. Additionally, fewer than half, 42%, think the meeting in uh, Singapore lessens the long-term challenge of war. That said, Americans are far more negative in were in the uh, advance of the meeting. A Washington Post-ABC poll, uh, 67% called it unlikely that uh, North Korea would denuclearize. Um, the number uh, who said uh, this as likely has grown uh, 30% uh, from 30% to a 41%. These are some of the outcomes. And this just shows in a foreign policy situation how influential the uh, mass media is on ordinary people and what they think. Ordinary people, and this goes back to the Wilsonian foreign policy, which is a racist policy, has been used by many administrations. It was uh, prominently uh, on display in the Obama administration via Foggy Bottom. That was the uh, kingdom of one Hillary the Monster Clinton and the Libyan struggle, etc. Now, will the summit lead North Korea to give up nuclear weapons? Likely 41%, unlikely 53%. And the summit has uh, made a long-term chance a war with North Korea, 42% less likely, 11% uh, more likely, made no difference, uh, 39%. But they have no idea about what is going on because open-end agreement. Moreover, the intensity of sentiment remains high among skeptics. It dropped uh, sharply. Uh, in uh, May, just 5% called it very likely. The summit would lead uh, to uh, North Korea relinqu relinquishing nu nuclear weapons, while 42% uh, very unlikely today. The proportions are 10% versus 25%, uh, that's 17%. Uh, strong in doubt. Now, this is a Langer Research Association conducted this, finding that the public 41 to 34% said Trump made a reasonable compromise at the summit. The ultimate outcome, 55% said it's uh, too early to tell. There's no doubt about that. These things do uh, take uh, time. Those willing to pick winners, uh, Kim outscored uh, Trump, uh, 39%. See, uh, and uh, the summit as successful uh, versus 5% who call it unsuccessful for the so-called uh, hermit uh, kingdom. And this is the post is grouping. One of the big problems here... In, we go across uh, topics where we're talking about government workers or we're talking about the immigrant issue with minor or juveniles at the border. It's the way that the uh, stories are framed by the monopoly media. If they want to call it a hermit, people see it as a hermit. They're not hermits. Chairman uh, Kim uh, proved that by touring uh, Singapore. And those kinds of, it's the same with the little children. Those things are very, very powerful. The uh, same thing happened to Bull Connor when he was turned into a steer in a Birmingham. People see those and people see the outcome of that situation. Does it make the denuclearization de uh, more possible? Yes. Now we have a, a, we'll have a tender agreement between the U.S. and the Republic of uh, Korea or South Korea 
not to have the military games. And now some have said, well, the military games have been games, excuse me, have been going on, but they've intensified in the number and quality of weapon that has been a use. It is an intimidation process. There's no doubt about that. Even D.J. Trump conceded to that. But this whole international scale, where does this leave D.J. Trump and his road to Oslo? Well, it leaves him kind of stranded halfway between or less than halfway between because now he has to go to the Mideast. We've had some movement evidently in the Mideast of drones attacking positions of the Assyrian army. There has to be a peace settlement in the Mideast between the Palestinians and the Zionist government. Period. Now, that, with like the Korean episode, is obviously not going to happen overnight, but they need to set down some general uh, principles much stronger than these quote-unquote old Oslo Accords that go back a very, very long time. And the issue there is the Palestinian state. It is there and their right to a self-determination, which needs, which uh, is a military uh, presence in their state and the return of some lands, period. Now, in the American media, because of the Zionist influence, the American people get basically one side of the coin and are immune to people being murdered there uh, on the uh, West Bank and in the occupied uh, territories. But this is the same uh, lens that we have the atrocities at McAllen, Texas, and outside of El Paso with the minor children, many of them, as Laura Bush said, on the four years old. In other words, what we used to call uh, babies, pretty much so. The differences are in all uh, political ideology. A very large uh, gender gap appears. Half of the uh, men said the summits are... Uh, lessens the chance of war, while a third of the women uh, say the same. There's a similar uh, gender gap, and likely with North Korea de- uh, denuclearizing. Men are twice as apt as women to say Trump made a reasonable compromise, where we're giving away too much. 55% of men versus uh, 23% of women. And now these are some of the, f- the situations here. Some of the success... Uh, 49% of the Republicans, 10% of the Independents, 5% of the Democrats, Conservatives, 34%, 8% of the Modest, 9% of the Liberals, Men, 28%, and Women, 14%. And if we go to Republicans, uh, North Korea likely to give up its nuclear weapons. The Republicans actually uh, is 41%, but the Republicans, 68%, Independents, 34%, and Democrats, uh, 26%. Conservatives, uh, 56%. Moderates are 33 and liberals are 27. With men, uh, 51%. Women are 32%. Least, uh, lesser long-term chance of war. Republicans, uh, 42 was the number of all. Republicans, uh, 66%. Independents, 39%. And Democrats, 28%. Conservatives, uh, 56%. Very unusual. Moderates, 32 and 30. And with men, 50% uh, percent, and women, 53% uh, percent there. Now, the methodology for this poll is the English and Espanol. Random sampling. Sampling area is 5.5%. The Langer Research Associates of New York collected the data, the uh, analysis by Gary Langer. And whom to... Uh, Heber uh, Raleigh or uh, Julie uh, Townsend. Yeah, I guess you can contact them and find out more about uh, this uh, particular situation. We won't go into any more of it, but this is uh, some polling, and we have uh, a long time uh, being there. Let me just to straighten up a few other little things here. This is something uh, H was talking about. Donald Trump's wooing African-American voters and killing the Democratic Party. This is in a USA Today uh, Network Detroit a Free Press on the 11th of June, a few days ago. You delusion of you think Donald Trump's decision to depart and, um, Jack Johnson commute uh, Ellis uh, Johnson's uh, says when part of a greater plan, the Democratic re- uh, Party repain, remains in a coma if it enters a uh, 2000. Uh, uh, in a coma, it entered the uh, 2016 race. 
Donald Trump is uh, performing his greatest magic trick. He's doing it under their noses, anyone who thinks anyway. Eh? Trump is wooing African-American voters. He doesn't really have to do much. He does it by inviting uh, the uh, presidents of some of the national historic African-American colleges to the Oval Office for a photo op. That was all they got. Anyone who thinks that Trump uh, didn't gain uh, some African-American uh, votes by these recent uh, actions don't understand the power of connecting uh, with the uh, disconnect. In Detroit and other urban areas where we get uh, where we can't get more than 14 to 20 percent of registered voters to turn out for a municipal election where people uh, still love uh, Mr. Uh, West. Though he thinks slavery was a choice. Or R. Kelly, who is avoiding a jail by uh, inexplicable means. Trump might be a uh, reasoning uh, there, and he is now uh, considering a pardon him. <laughs> well, Muhammad Ali did not need a pardon. It is one of the more distractions, a series of distractions from the federal investigation, no doubt about that. If you miss it, most people did when uh, Trump announced it. It was barely a blip on the scene. He raised uh, ten million dollars there, and the NAACP didn't match. The Urban League didn't uh, put out a statement, and in Detroit, no one uh, said a word. When the Democratic Party is sleeping and focusing on winning the uh, November midterm elections, and rather than uniting behind a candidate in 2020. Trump is successed in uh, at uh, something few people have thought possible. He's getting uh, some African people to compare him to Barack Obama. Hmm. He didn't uh, get uh, Alice Johnson out of uh, jail. Obama didn't pardon Jack Johnson, uh, even though Ken Burns asked him to and produced a, a documentary. Trump isn't killing the Republican Party. He is killing the Democratic Party that is here. He's making people forget the Democratic Party champion programs for their descendants. Well, that's what you did for us today, uh, situation there. He is uh, wooing African-American voters by accepting the friendship of people like comedian uh, Steve Harvey. You know, Steve Harvey was there. And uh, Kenny West. and by pardoning Johnson, etc. If you're not careful, the Democrats uh, will look up and realize that the African-American base they uh, taken for granted for decades might not be as enthusiastic. And that is where the trick is right there. Uh, they have uh, two things out there, the uh, Trump administration. Voter suppression is the number one, and apathy is number two. It's sort of like uh, Mr. Farrakhan and various others went on predominantly African-American news outlets, and uh, uh, talked about super predator. And Hillary Clinton was thrown under the bus, and Minister Farrakhan was driving him. So this is this is part of the analogy coming there. If you suppress the vote, and at the same time give people less incentive to vote, and the problem the Democratic Party has, that treatment of, of Bernie Sanders that comes out, you have to make a decision in terms of standard voters, if you mistreat them in the primaries, block their access, etc., are you going to turn around the general election and ask some of those people to vote for you? Some did. Some did not. They went like we did with Jill uh, Stein and the Green Party. But that is always a big question. And their mistreatment of uh, Congressman Ellison, who is running now for Attorney General in, in, in Minnesota, he was running for chair of the uh, Democratic Party. But what the Democratic Party does not understand, and this is one of the big, big items, that things are changing. This is not 1965. This is not 1975. And it's not even 1980 when old uh, New Morning in America, a known bigot uh, named Ronald Reagan, was running uh, for office. And most people don't realize the effects that Reagan had on African Americans in terms of progress, 
in terms of trying to dismantle the government and on working people. I remember being out there with Willie and those people uh, with farm aid and the farmers were thrown off the farm. People forget about that. The massive amount of people that were unemployed. We had an unemployment project in Philadelphia. But those are some of the things that came about as Reagan. And now fools uh, glorify Reagan on various aspects of it, his trip, say, to the Soviet Union and the agreement with uh, the General Secretary Gorbachev, which was a mistake, incidentally. But those are some of the things they remember the fool. But if they remember he was the man that brought about the deficits, he was the man uh, that uh, almost crashed the market. He escaped, but it was a much smaller economy in those days. The economy was not globalized on the Reagan. So Reagan should be uh, remembered only as an inept old fool that hobbled into the office and was there. And these people with writing books uh, glorifying him should be taken to the proverbial woodshed, as LBJ would say, because uh, his eight years were nothing but a disaster for working people, for African people, and other people of, of color, not only that, within the world. Now, one of the things he did not do other than Granada he did not start a lot of these wars, period. He didn't have the neocoms. Some of them were around, but they didn't have the great influence on his foreign policy. And Baker kept the Zionists at bay, period, by saying they didn't vote for us. But then came uh, George H.W. Bush, and the neocons slipped back in. And on the Bill Clinton, they had the whole playground to themselves. So this is part of Wilsonian foreign policy we're still up against today. This article, incidentally, was uh, Rachel uh, Raleigh. who's a columnist for the Detroit a Free a Press. We put it on uh, our uh, website. We finally got that one out of the uh, uh, situation. Uh, Ah, oh, we'll we'll bring this up. This is a partnership between Howard University, Historic African American University, and the NFL is about jobs. Now, this is a very important situation, whether it be at Harvard, Harvard or not, unveiling its controversial uh, anthem policy. And this is by uh, Ms. Shabazz. What a bit of good news for African Americans on Wednesday it announced a new partnership with the maker of Historic African American Universities, Howard and will collaborate to create the Campus Connection Program, which uh, was designed to help children, de- uh, excuse me, students develop professional careers in uh, football management. And that is the next uh, big step for African-American uh, athletes and people to get actually into the management of sport. In All About Sports, we talk about the business of sport, and we will, of course, include this. This is not the first time the NFL has partnered with... Uh, historic uh, African-American uh, universities in uh, 2016 uh, with the Mid-Amer- Mid-Eastern, uh, Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference and the Southwestern Athletic Conference to increase diversity in the administrative office. Very, very, very important to have diversity uh, in the uh, administration there in terms of uh, sports uh, directors at the university level, assistant directors, etc., I noticed that ESPN and places like that, there are more African-American and women uh, broadcasters receive professional development training. These participants that uh, participate in the program. New partnership is extension of the program. Well, we need uh, it at Howard and we need various other places. Benefits of the program are designed uh, to span beyond the institution. The program will help uh, connect students with league internships, mentorships, and networking opportunities. She's a junior in a mass, Ms. Shabazz, in mass communications uh, from a loyal, uh, loyal, uh, loyal Maryland. She attended Grambling State University and is a staff writer for the Grambling. Uh, Night, a light. Never heard of the newspaper, but we always go over here for the uh, the undefended. It's a very interesting uh, website. Um, let 
various uh, things here. We'll get back uh, to uh, this uh, site. Uh, period. And we'll use some of their articles on all about uh, sports. Let me just make sure there's anything else we have setting around that uh, we have not brought out here. We finally got the poll out here. Um, So we'll do the sports. Brooke uh, Kopler, I suppose is how I see. K O K O E P K A. The U.S. Open. We'll just let that go. But uh, to the World Cup, uh, this is on uh, Sunday. As we, uh, there was uh, Costa Rica and Serbia. Serbia won uh, there on that one, uh, won nothing. And Germany, Mexico upset there, Mexico on that particular one. And Brazil, a powerhouse and Switzerland, a 1 1 a tie. And let's go back to Saturday. I don't know we reported this with France and Austria. Uh, France, 2 to 1. Argentina, another powerhouse, and Iceland, 1 1 tie. A little surprise there. Peru and Denmark. Uh, Denmark won enough. And uh, uh, Croatia and Nigeria. Shut them out to uh, two zips. So that is the World uh, Cup. Uh, let's let's do the standings. Uh, we're still not doing the standings here. In uh, Major League Baseball, we'll try to do the standings. We like to do it on the Monday morning uh, quarterback if we can. And we'll wait and see. And here we go. In the American League East, the Yankees are on uh, top. The uh, Sox are uh, ah, they're virtually uh, well, virtually tied. Uh, the Yankees are playing six eighty-seven ball, and the Sox uh, six seventy-one. And Tampa Bay is fifteen games back, and Toronto is fifteen games back, and twenty-seven back is the Orioles, and they're just back. In the American League Central, the Cleveland uh, team uh, is on top, and the Tigers are two and a half games back. The uh, Minnesota Twins are five games back. It's just manageable. In the West, it's the Astros, and one and a half games back. The Mariners, whom they play, they won't. Anyway, the um, Los Angeles Angels are five and a half games back. And in the National League East, Atlanta is on top. Unbelievable. One and a half games back. The Nationals and then the Phillies are four games back. The Mets are ten games back. And forget about it. The Marlins, what, fourteen and a half back. In the Central, uh, Milwaukee is on top. The Cubbies are a half game back. They lost today. And uh, the Cardinals won. The Cardinals are four games back. That's going to be a tight race. And the Pirates are seven games back right now. We're not to the All-Star break. The Arizona Diamonds on top in the West, and then come the uh, Dodgers. They are one and a half games back, and the Giants are four and a half games back, and the Rockies are five games back, so all those teams are pretty close, and the Padres are six and a half games back. The uh, D-backs have won 32, 39, and uh, won at 32, so they're playing 5-49 ball. And the Dodgers, uh, 37 and 33, they're playing 529 uh, ball. And the Giants are at 486. Now to the baseball scores. The Marlins were in uh, Camden uh, Yards. Uh, the Orioles 10 to 4. The Nationals and uh, the uh, Blue Jays in Toronto. Blue Jays 8 to 6. The Twins and uh, Cleveland uh, in uh, Cleveland. Cleveland four to one. The Padres and Atlanta uh, in Atlanta four to one. The Reds and Pirates uh, in uh, Pittsburgh. Red little uh, rivalry there, eight to six. The uh, Reds were on top. The Rays and Yankees in New York. Rays pull it out of Tampa Bay three to one. The loser was Mr. C. C. Sabathany. Anyway. The Tigers in a White Sox. Uh, hmm. The Tigers three to one over the Sox on the South Side of Chicago. The Phillies in a Brewers in a Milwaukee Brewers ten to nine. High slugging game there. 
The Phillies had uh, 10 hits, no errors, and the Brewers had 13 hits and no errors. It was in Milwaukee. The uh, Astros and uh, Royals in uh, Kansas City, Astros 7-4. to four. Astros keep on winning. The Rockies and Rangers in uh, Texas, hard slugging game there. Uh, Rangers 13-12. to 12. The uh, Rockies, did I call them the Astros? Anyway, the Rockies of Denver. 15 hits and 2 errors, and the Rangers 10 hits and no errors. And in 11, the Angels were in Oakland. Oakland 6-5, to five. Oakland uh, 9 hits, uh, Angels 9 hits, no errors, and Oakland 7 hits and 1 error. The Red Sox and Mariners in uh, Seattle it was all Red Sox 9-3. to three. Over the Mariners, the Sox had 13 hits, 1 error. Mariners 8 hits and no errors. Mr. Rodriguez was a winner. The Giants and Dodgers down in uh, L.A. It was uh, Giants uh, four to one. Uh, we tuned in that game. The Mets and D-backs in Arizona. Mets uh, five to three. Unbelievable. The Cubbies were shut out down in uh, St. Louis uh, five nothing. Cards over the Cubs. Cards had ten hits, two errors. The Cubs four hits and one error. So uh, they won uh, a three to two. That series has been going on. Uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the Cubs won it uh, in a landslide on uh, Friday night and also Saturday night. Uh, tonight, they came up a short. Well, yeah. Quintana, was, Quintana was the uh, loser, and I believe he was also injured. So these injuries are one of the things we'll look at uh, here before we completely get out of uh, pocket. Let me just uh, get in uh, one more uh, prostate uh this was uh, has Joe uh, Torrey in it uh, for Prostate Cancer and the Prostate Foundation. This year we're running at about 2.29, so we're going to have about 500 to 520 home runs. So if you pledge a dollar, that would be $500. 100% of it goes to medical research. And that research not only affects prostate cancer, but the mutations in prostate cancer line up against 72 other forms of cancer, including pediatric cancer. So it's been a journey, and as you know, we started with the idea of keeping dad in the game. Come out to the ballpark and reminding your dad to get checked. Uh, and called out on strikes, Ian Happ, after a home run hit by Addison Russell. So we've had two home runs in this one tonight. Helping the home run challenge cause there for you, Michael. No, it is. The Cubs only have, that's only the seventh home run hit by the Cubs in June, and you have a player that set seven all by himself this month. Well, Ozuna's on a run. The pitch goes outside to Kyle Hendricks. I'll tell you that, that you know, cancer is a scary, uh, scary proposition. And any time I know when I heard the, the word cancer in 99, I, I just thought of a black hole, John, and uh, and of course, uh, you know, all of a sudden you're educated and you, you have a little better, uh, a little better feel for it. But uh, early detection is so important uh, in, in all cancers. But this cancer, uh, prostate cancer, you know, it could save your life, and that that uh, certainly gets your attention. And a pitch goes inside ball three, three and two on Kyle Hendricks. As we visit with Michael Milken and Joe Torrey, talking about the. Home run challenge, uh, pitch for ball four, a walk to Hendricks. So the idea was early detection, just that simple blood test, and it's kind of amazing that you can have an early warning system. You wish in all life-threatening diseases you could, but it doesn't exist in most of them. And with this $50 million we've raised from home runs that have been hit, today there's now eight drugs approved. And even if prostate cancer had spread through your body, you have a 99% a chance of living five years or longer. Well, the research and what they've been able to find and then uh, the testing they've done has come so far since 1993. Here's a ground ball base hit by Zobris. That sends Hendricks to second. Fowler gets the ball back in, and the Cubs have two hits and a walk this inning, and they're in position to take a lead here with Jason Hayward coming up. But... Boy, it has come so far. You talked about what the money has done and has led to research in other cancer areas, but we need to keep this going. That is correct, and one of the things you're lucky here in St. Louis, 
is that you have one of the great research institutions in the world in Wash U, and we've been funding them for 25 years. So a lot of the money raised stays right here in the St. Louis area. Now, you were affected by prostate cancer, Michael, and uh, then how did you get this whole thing off the ground as Hayward hits a ground ball to Wong out at second and on the first double play? But how did you get this started? Major League Baseball, a number of the owners, and we said, well, we can probably substantially reduce the death rate if we can get awareness out, and this is the greatest awareness program you can imagine. Where do the fans go to make their pledge right now? Homerunchallenge.org. The challenge is on, and just like your patch says, keep Dad in the game, Michael. Thank you. That was uh, Michael uh, Milken, the former... uh, junk bond uh, king with the uh, homeroom challenge which has ended but you can still go to the uh, prostate uh, foundation dot org and make an org and make a donation it is a and if you don't make a donation there's a lot of information there for people with uh, prostate cancer or have had prostate cancer like myself and also uh, to getting uh, tested uh Various things that you uh, recommend to eat. One of those is not eggs. They shouldn't eat eggs. Watch the skin on a chicken, etc. There are a number of others there. I have Emma on and talk about the health aspects there. Eat plenty of tomatoes. That is one of the uh, situations. Nonetheless, this will end it for us. Uh, have a pleasant week, everyone. Uh, old Boston Red here from uh, WBRN Radio and BostonRed.org. Uh, Incidentally, we have a numbers uh Man uh, program, that part of it there. we Phasing out so much of numbers, man, we still have this week in economics. We talk about macroeconomics. Plenty to talk about there, including stagnant uh, wages. And where the uh, Trump economy is headed and where it's not headed, a lot of information coming out there. The Fed did raise the uh, interest rate of 0.25 or 25 basis points. So the interest rate is going up, which affects people with credit cards, uh, mortgages, etc. And uh, we're looking for other information there. We'll have an open source report coming up here if uh, not uh, today, the next day. We pretty much have finished it off. 